Well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here today because some colleagues told me that last night wasn't easy at all. Uh, it's okay, no, to be to be here. So, well, my talk is about. Uh, we are going to show how at Biosodal uh, we are tracking threat actors, APTs, and also cybercrime threat actors, just with images and also some artifacts that we are considering that are interesting to take into account when you are tracking these kind of campaigns that they are, they are using uh, Word documents or PDF or, or others. So just a summary about myself. Uh, this is Jose Lillo coming from the south of Spain. Uh, right now I'm working at VirusTotal as a security engineer. Previously I have been working at McAfee and Slash Relix as a security researcher and also in BlackBerry in the CTI team. Um, there you have my social media, just in case you want to uh, give me some feedback about the presentation or if you have any idea about how you can do similar things that, that we are going to say uh, today during the talk. So the presentation, the agenda for today, uh, we have these four points. First of all, I will explain why I decided to do this research. Uh, I, I think this is, uh, this is important to know, to understand the result of the presentation. Then I will explain the, the research for itself, the results that we obtained during the, all these uh, months that we were working on this. Then we are going to see some in the wild samples that we found so related to uh, APTs and crime actors. And finally, we are going to discuss the limitation and conclusion about the research because there are some limitations that uh, we cannot uh, do it through Biosodal, but maybe uh, in other platforms or using other technology like the AI or something like that can be nice to, to have into account. So first of all, as I said, uh, let me give you a small summary about why uh, I am here explaining this research. So usually when you are doing threat hunting, uh, all the threat hunters, or not all, but most of them, and also detection, detection engineers, are focused on the intermediate and also the final phases of the kill chain, from exploitation to installation, command and control, and external objectives. The reason is because usually we have more data services there, we have more information there. Usually when there is a vendor uh, sharing some uh, insights about APTs or whatever, they are sharing more information on those phases because it's easy to get that information at the end. But there are other phases that are also important. Um, uh, it's where we wanted to take this research, this research in the delivery and also in the weaponization phases, okay? So today we are going to talk about those two phases and how we are tracking the threat actors uh, there. But let me also explain you something that is interesting because uh, there is a color bias, there is a color theory that uh, in most of the platforms that we have nowadays in relation to cybersecurity, there are colors where you can see that if something is malicious or something is not malicious and are related with the green and with the red. So in Biosodal you have those colors as well. If something is malicious, you are going to see the red color, but if something is not malicious or there are not engines that are uh, triggering the specific sample as a malicious, uh, you are going to see that sample with a green color. So there are hundreds of color psycho uh, psychology studies that have demonstrated that the colors can profoundly influence our decision making. So usually the green color means that something is good and the red color uh, means that something is bad or malicious. And if you didn't realize in this, in this uh, slide, you have the word uh, wrong in the, in the wrong color. I mean, in the, in the green you have the malicious word and in the red, you have the bending word. In, and if you didn't realize about that, it's because the color bias at the end. So why I am explaining this? I am explaining this because let me show you just an example. This is a side winder sample, uh, which was uploaded to Biosotal this year. So there you have uh, some URLs and domains that are related to this specific sample. And probably if you start doing hunting or whatever, you start doing the analysis of the sample, you are going to click on the red colors on the URL and also on the domains that you have in the uh, contacted domains section. If you go scroll down in the same sample, 
you are going to have the compressor patterns, and probably you are going to click on the zip file just to see if in the same zip file there are other malicious artifacts. And then we have the bundle files that probably you may click on the XML file, which will likely contains the macros related to this Word document. But there are other files that usually we are not doing some clicks in Biosodal and probably in other platforms that are in green. And that I would say that are not sexy at all because our images are XML files and probably we are not to uh, waste our time clicking on those files. So because of that, I was trying to figure out if we could create something or we could give some insight about how we can track thread actors using those specific files that are bundled in the Word documents and also in other kind of documents like PDF or emails. So what, what is there in common in all these files? All these files are related to APT thread actors. All these files were used during the delivery phase of the kill chain. And all these files contain images at the end, OK? And those images can be used to monitor some activities related to uh, threat actors that we have identified that were using the same image during uh, a specific time in different, in, in different docu Word documents, OK? So if we are, if we are able to, to get those images and track the images in order to create some kind of life hang or something like that in Biosotal or, or in other platforms, we can identify when there is a new document using the same image that we found previously, OK? So now I'm going to explain you how, is, or how I did this research, OK? We are going to focus mainly uh, for the Word documents on the bundle files, OK? And in the bundle files, we are going to take into, into account in this research only the images, the styles XML file, and the content types XML file, OK? Then we have also the PDF documents. And instead of having bundle files, in this case, we have drop files in Biosodal. And we are going to focus also on the images that are dropped by the PDF files and other kind of artifacts that are dropped during the execution of the PDF in our sandboxes. And finally, we have other kind of document. In this case, we are going to see email. Uh, and the emails have something similar as we have with the PDF or the office document, the bundle files. But we have also another section in the emails that, are, that is called uh, email attachments that can be used for this purpose. So let me introduce you why in the Office document we are getting that uh, or we are going to take in consideration this information. First of all, the images. As I said before, there are some actors that are using images, uh, some of them related to governments or companies in order to deceive the victim. and. Uh, give or try to be executed in the system, no? just to give more confidence, let's say. There is also another artifact, which is called the content types. And this file uh, specifies the content types and relationships within the uh, Word document, and is automatically created when you have the Word document or you are creating the Word document in your system, OK? So for example, if in your Word document you are embedding some, in some image, then the content type is going to add a line telling that a PNG format, for example, file is embedded inside the Word document, OK? And then we have the styles, which uh, store stylistic definition for the document. So for example, if we, I want to create, let's say, a new title in my Word document, and I can, I can call the title as a Jose Ligio, for example, that information can be stored within the styles in the, in the Word document, OK? So the facts that we have identified is that some thread actor were using the same image in multiple documents used by the same thread actor at different moments in time. We have identified as well uh, the use of the same content types in multiple files used by the same thread actors and by different thread actors sharing the same content type. And we have also identified some styles that were also used the same specific styles in multiple documents uh, by the same thread actor and different thread actors. But I have to say that the content time is sometimes quite generic. I mean, probably in here we have Word documents created in our systems, and we are sharing the same has of the content type because it's a file that is quite generic and is is only storing the information about the entities that we are embedding inside the Word. 
and sometimes the styles are also generic, but I would say that the styles files are a bit more uh, specific for some kind of documents because at the end you can create your own style for your Word document and the thread actors usually, sometimes they are using uh, that or they are doing that as well in their operations. Just to give you an example, this is a, con a content type a file, if you know, yeah. This is an example of a content type. There you have the different definitions that are inside your Word document. And then this is a, an example of the styles XML file, which is embedded also in the, in the Word document. So as I said, this is not that definite, uh, let's say, way to track in and identify new samples related to threat actors, but can help us to do pivoting and also to do threat hunting uh, in relation to some kind of threat actors and documents that we, has, we saw in the past. So let's see now some of the results that we obtained during the research. First of all, the scope of this research was made based on these threat actors and documents that we identified. In this case, this is for only for the Office documents, not for the PDF, okay? Uh, I decided to do this research. Uh, being honest, I have no idea, but <laughs> because I, I found a lot of uh, Word documents related to these threat actors in various authors, so I, I thought that it was a, go a good idea to, to start with, with this. So, okay, so this is an example of APT28 images used during their documents. So, what you are seeing here is, uh, or are all the images that were used by APT28 in this case, all the colors are related to, and the hashes are related to images that were within the Word document of APT2028. And then in the right side, you have the number of documents that were uh, that, that specific image found in various total. So for example, last one, also you are seeing just one, bu one bullet. Uh, there is al at least two or more samples that were identified using the specific, that specific image. And if we take a look into the images just to see the content, First of all, the first image is just a line. There is no, nothing interesting in the image for itself. Maybe it's automatically embedded but, uh, for some software that is creating Word documents or whatever. And this image is uh, or appears in more than 100 files uh, as a pattern. I mean, this image was used in other 100 files not related to APT28 but related to whatever other kind of product or even for bending documents, not malicious one. The second image is uh, an insignificant image of hand and this image was found in another 14 documents uh, embedded. So we are going to take a look uh, of this image later. The third one is a fake office enabled content image which was found also in another 13 different documents as a uh, as a compressor, okay, not related to APT2028. That image, I don't know what is that exactly, but same as the first sample. Uh, that image was embedded in other 100 files. And finally, the last one is a fake EDA roadmap of the European Commission. And it was embedded within other four documents. And the coolest thing here is that the extension of this image was e EMF. It wasn't a PNF or GPG or whatever. So it's an old format that was used by Microsoft Office or something like that, as I could understand. So taking as an example the image of the insignificant hand, we are going to see that if we go to various total, as, I, as we saw previously, that the image contains 14 compressed patterns. And all those 14 Word documents were using that specific image when it was created. And then if we take into the, the information that are related to those specific documents, all of them were related to a Mandian, uh, a Mandian report that was targeting, or APT28 was targeting uh, hospitality sector. And if we go to the details of the specific Word document that were distributed in this case, the, all the, do the Word documents uh, were something similar like this. And as you can see, there is the image of the hand. Just having that image, uh, mon uh, let's say, uh, creating some kind of life or whatever in virus total, you can track 
in the future new samples that could be used in the same image for whatever other purpose. It's just an example. Just to give you another example difference. There, there we have the different images used by uh, Sidewinder in this case. But we are going to focus especially on that specific image, which is a signature, okay? That image, which is related to a signature, was also used by Sidewinder in two different samples. The first one was in 2021, and the second one was in 2022. So this means that if we uh, were able to track the image during that specific period of time, we could identify the new sample related to this group in 2022. Because the, the, the samples were something like this. Were pretty similar, but were different at the, at the end. And they were using exactly the same signature at the end of the document, okay? So this is another example just to show you how this research can be used in your, in your daily basis. So this is the header of the, of the same documents, and the signature in this case was related to a Barber Villar header, which is, a, a, let's say, somebody from, I don't know exactly where, but it's related to international relations, and uh, these documents related to uh, Sidewinder were targeting, if I'm not mistaken, Pakistan government, uh, which is one of the countries that is focused this APT in this case. So now talking about the content times and not the images, uh, in this case, I compared the gamma ray samples that share the same content type, okay, uh, on at least two or more occasions, okay. So as I said in the beginning, some of these content times are, let's say, uh, somewhat more generic than seeing in other samples. Another gave me results only from gamma ray ones. So as you can see here, there are multiple content types, uh, all these hashes, hashes are related to the content types of the document related to Gamaredo, and the bullets are the samples that we found in Barisotal or and related with the with they when it was uploaded to Barisotal. As I said before, although you are seeing just one bullet here, or here, or here, there are at least two or more samples that were shared in the same content type. And the same information for the styles. These are the styles related to Gamaredon uh, that we found used during the different period of time uh, related to this thread actor. As you can see, the, the difference or the main difference that I found in relation to the content types, well, this, the content types and the styles, is that as you can see in the content types, there are more samples that were blooded to virus total and may be used by the threat actor during the time. Uh, instead, for the, in, in the other hand, for the styles, what we saw is that some specific styles were used specifically in a short period of time uh, for, I don't know what reason, but it's something that was interesting for us and we identifying most of the threat actors during the research. So the other thing that I wanted to do was uh, taking into account of the styles related to Gamaredon, I created a graph to see the different clusters that were related to each of one of the styles that I found in this research. So you are seeing what you are seeing here is uh, all the different styles that I found related to Gamaredon and all the patterns, uh, word patterns that were embedding or using that specific styles in order to see different clusters and, and identify some kind of patterns or whatever. And that's what I did. I tried to get some pattern, create some Jara rule, run the Jara rule in, in BiosTotal, get the results, uh, sorry, get, uh, run the RetroHang in BiosTotal, get the results, and see if there are some new styles or, uh, or similar styles that could be related to Camaradon or maybe other threat actors from the same uh, region because I was using some kind of patterns related to the language and so on. And this is the result. Uh, I, the result uh, gave me some results, so, some new samples related, or some new styles, XML files related to other malwares that were found in virus total, not related to Gamaredon in this case, but was interesting to see some of them. So we are going to focus especially on this one, just to give you another example about, uh, instead of using images to do pivoting, how you can use the styles 
uh, to do the pivoting. So this is a, a style related to Gamaredon, and it contains uh, 17 compressor patterns. All of them are Word documents, and if we take a look into the Word documents that are set in the same styles, we are going to see that all of them, or almost all of them, were having this specific format. And this, can, and, uh, this document is related to the Embassy of Ukraine in Hungary. Something interesting from these files that I found and helped me to do another pivoting, another kind of pivoting, was all the images that you are seeing here. All these icons are images that were also embedded within the Word document. So taking, for example, the Facebook image, we can get another uh, pattern that we observe in this case for Gamaredo in relation to the images. And as you can see, all these uh, different documents that are uploaded in the same time using different images. Remember that each color is a different image that we found in use by Gamaredo in this case. All of them were related to the same kind of document of the embassy of Ukraine in Hungary. So there you have, for example, for the Facebook icon, if you start doing pivoting, you are going to see that there are 12, uh, oh, 12 other documents related to that specific image. So another que question that I asked to myself was, are there uh, styles that are being served between different thread actors? And the answer was yes, but as I said before, this, is, this doesn't mean that they are sharing documents or sharing artifacts, based on, but it's something that is worth to, to take into account in, and, and research uh, deeply. So there are some of the different uh, styles that were shared by some threat actors, and in fact, we are going to focus on those two uh, specific, uh, or, or these specific styles, which was shared by uh, Russell Tiger, APT28, and USC0099, because it's something interesting that I saw um, related to this specific style that was shared, or, or yeah, was shared by these three, three thread actors. Okay, so just taking, just having or taking the documents related to APT20 and, and UIC 0099, we are going to see that in various total, those documents that were used in the same uh, styles are these. For example, the left one is it's a document related to APT28, and was reported by X-Force and Trend Micro. And uh, as they say, uh, this is a, a campaign or it was a campaign related to APT28. However, in the, in the right side, we have the document or two different documents that are related to UAC 0099 and it was reported by Deep Instinct Threat Research Team. Both files or the three files uh, all of them are sharing the same styles and the same content types. So we don't really know if maybe all of them could be related to the same thread actor or not, but it's something that is interesting to, to, to see with more details. And the same as I, I did with the style XML, I, I did it also with the content type, and I asked to myself if there are some content types are between thread actors, and yeah. But Honestly, the result for this specific uh, artifact, some of them were not quite, I could say, good at the end because some were, were some content types that were very, very generic and uh, were used by many thread actors, but not only thread actors, also for uh, other documents created by legged companies and so on. And the next thing that I was interested to, to take uh, was using the AI to get information about the images because it's something that we are exploring and see if we can maybe in the future uh, add into the platform is uh, for every document that I was finding during the research, I wanted to ask to Gemini, uh, the Google AI, if can recognize what is in that specific image because with that I can create some kind of a script or application and try to store all the documents that are having or embedding some specific image related to governments or whatever. And if there is a government logo or something similar, I'm going to get some kind of alert to, to take and, and see what is going on in that specific document. As you can see, uh, there are some results. The result for 
those kind of images that were related to logos of governments or people or whatever were good at the end. As you can see, all the different results uh, is, giving, is giving me the, the current answer. But being honest, for other kind of images where the results were not good at all, because for example, the first one, I don't know what is that specific image, but Gemini was, taking, was telling me that it was a CD, Deutsche Bank, a Mastercard, and Visa. So, and probably the same for the rest, no? This one also, the image related to war was telling me that it was a Pepsi and Sprite logo. Okay. It's something that we probably using other kind of LLMs or ChatGPT or whatever, maybe we can have other kind of results. Um, if you are wondering, we try also the DHAS uh, modifier that we have included in various models. So in this case, as you can see, all these images are related to the coat of farm of Ukraine. Um, looking for the similarities related to each of, of them, for, for example, for the first sample that we are seeing there, oh, sorry, there at the top, when you look for that specific uh, DHAS in virus total, you are going to get only this other image related to the same uh, cut of farm of Ukraine. And if you look for this other, the other result that you are going to obtain is the second one. It's not working well at all. Sometimes for other kind of research that we did related to AI, uh, ChatGPT, malicious application and so on, we got good results. But in this case, for this kind of images that I was looking for, the results were not good at all. But well, sometimes can be useful as well. And now I'm going to explain you how we are doing or you can use this kind of uh, artifacts for the PDFs. Well, we are going to see an example of Blind Eagle, which is a cybercrime group based on Latin America. This sample uh, is a sample that was distributed to some uh, big team during this year. And if you open the PDF, you are going to see something similar to this. Okay, that's, that's uh, an excursion that is generated by our sandboxes. And something that we didn't realize is that we are using Adobe Acrobat Reader in our sandboxes, which means that when there is a PDF opened by our sandbox and is uh, executed, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader is going to create a screenshot of the first page of the PDF, and then we are storing that description as a dropper file in our uh, results that can be used to do pivoting and identify new PDF using the same kind of screenshot, okay? The limitation here is that if you change some logo or you change the font size or the colors of the PDF, the screenshot is not going to be exactly the same. So you are not going to get the results. But for some campaigns that we observed, there were multiple uh, PDF using exactly the same content distributed to multiple big things. So as you can see here, in the same PDF, if you go to the drop files, you are going to see the BMP file, which is the generated by Adobe Acrobat Reader. And in this case, if you click to do that specific BMP file, you are going to see the execution patterns, which are the other uh, PDF files related to Blind Eagle uh, campaign in this case, okay? And that's the, the image that is generated by the Acrobat Reader software. And there are also other artifacts that are generated by our sandboxes that also uh, will be interesting to do some kind of pivoting, okay? So this is another different uh, sample related to Blind Eagle. And if you, if you can see there in the drop files of this specific PDF, there is a C++, it's not a C++, it's a, a JavaScript. Uh, we did something bad there to, to categorize the, the file. But the interesting here, the thing here is that if you start doing pivoting on that specific JavaScript, you are going to see other uh, files related as well to Blind Igor that were using that specific artifact. And what's that artifact? I was trying to identify and understand what was that, that artifact. And the artifact was related to a uh, shared point. Okay, something that is good also uh, for, for us that we didn't realize in our sandboxes is that if you have a PDF, um, you execute the, the PDF is going to be executed automatically and the, if there is a link in the PDF, the sandbox is going to click on the link and it's going to, to, to visit the website through uh, Google Chrome. This artifact was dropped by Google Chrome in this case 
and was related to, as I said, SharePoint. So as I, said, as I could see in this campaign, the government of Colombia is using SharePoint. So when you are visiting uh, the main web page, or I don't, I don't recall exactly which path it was, you are having dropped some kind of artifacts from the website, which means that if there are other samples in various sort of that are doing some kind of communication with the government of Colombia, are going to have that specific drop file as well. And you can do pivoting in order to get new files that could be related to, to the same campaign or different campaigns just because the sandbox is generating that specific artifact as a drop file, which is cool. It's another feature that we didn't realize that we have, but we have. <laughs> something interesting to, to take into account. And just to uh, finish the, the presentation, let me show you another example about emails. Well, on November last year, I reported, sorry for the Spanish, because it was a, a campaign uh, which was mainly targeting uh, countries in Latin, and there were some kind of campaign that was trying to impersonate some university from Colombia, Chile, Argentina, and, others, and other countries. The email in this case had something like this that you are seeing. In this case, the email was related to uh, or was trying to impersonate the University of Chile. And as you can see, there are some images in the email which are related to the building of the University of Chile. But for me, the most important ones are the ones that are in the footer, in the footer which are related to social media networks. So what I did in this case was start doing some kind of pivoting during uh, this research using the images related to the social media. So what I found in this case, for example, uh, through the, I think it was through the Instagram uh, icon, I saw that there were other 33 different emails using exactly the same icon uh, related to Instagram for other, uh, can other un impersonating other universities, not only from uh, Latin, but also from the rest of the Europe. So we could identify new uh, emails related to this campaign, probably uh, by the same traductor, targeting the University of Bucharest, the University of Colombia, University of uh, Vietnam, and others. So just clicking just one image, we could identify new samples related to the same campaign, OK? So conclusions. We can potentially trace uh, malicious activity uh, just tracking some kind of artifacts, not only these three that we saw in this presentation, content types, styles, and images, but I am pretty sure that there are also some other artifacts that are interesting to, to take into account in order to get new samples or tracking traductors. Today we don't know if we incorporate the bundle files in the JSON structure to create life and rules. It's something that we are working on. You are going to have that in the future. But for the draw files, we have. So you can create life and rules in various total just to identify if it's dropping some kind or some specific file has some uh, file. So it's something that you can have into account. So in certain situations, the styles and content types uh, can provide valuable clues for identifying new uh, activity related to traductors. Um, the method presented here offers an alternative, an alternative to the traditional threat hunting that we already uh, know. It's not the definitive way, but it's a complementary uh, way to, to do threat hunting. Well, there you have me, my email. There you have also our contact us. Um, yeah, we are happy to see feedback from the community. Thank you very much. OK, so could the next speakers just uh, get closer to the podium and uh, we have time for one question quickly yeah Oops, that's the mic. thank you for the talk very interesting approach um, I understand that most of what you showed today is rather based uh, right now on, on like manual research and analysis um, my question is do you plan like automating, like generating some, I would say, kind of fingerprint from different documents and then maybe also including it in a virus total platform, like you can find related documents based on that kind of similarities? Well, what we are planning to do, or at least we are trying to get 
more information about this, is uh, for those documents that are embedding some kind of images, what we want to do is like add a new, I could say metadata field, or I don't know how we are going to call it, uh, saying that that specific document, document was embedding an image related to something. So for example, let's imagine that there are multiple documents using the image of the uh, French government. If you have a field in VirusTotal uh, that you can just click to people to other documents telling you that are using the French image of the government, uh, is something that we are exploring and w that can be really nice for the community in order to identify uh, new documents using that specific image. But for the uh, styles and content types, we are not planning to do anything with that because at the end it's not the definitive approach to track or to have some kind of fingerprint related to the documents. Thank you. Thank you.